I am Anil Kumar sharing with you some basic properties of polygons. We have four questions here to answer. The very first one is polygon means many angles. Is it true or false? Question number two. What are polygons? Question number three. Explain why the following are not polygons. So we are given you three figures here and they are not polygons. But you need to explain why. Question number four is draw equiangular and then equilateral and regular hexagon. So these three are three different figures which you need to draw. One of them should have equal angles, the other one equal sides and third one regular hexagon. But all should be hexagons. Okay. So you can always pause the video, answer these four questions and then look into my suggestions. So let's begin with basic understanding of polygons. Now here is a very critical question. Polygon means many angles. Now many of my students, they think polygon means many sides. Since we name polygons on based, based on sides. But this statement is actually true. So the correct answer is true. It really means many angles. Okay, poly many and gun is for angles. So it means many angles. That is very important to understand. Now let's answer the second question, which is what are polygons? Now there are many different ways in which we can look into this solution. We can say it is closed figure when we say closed figure we are trying to say two dimensional with three or more sides now that is a very rough definition. Now, this definition is a very, very uh, rough definition. To make it more specific, we use some words which will help us really define polygon. So, we say that polygons are made up of segments. So, polygons are made of connected segments. Segments are straight lines, my idea, right? Such that they have two properties. One, that each in each segment intersects exactly two other segments one at each end we can say end point now this is important so we say each segment intersects exactly two other segments, one at each end. Right. Two other segments, one at each end. It means, let's say if I have one segment here, then this segment is attached with two other segments. Let's say, let's make a triangle first, one and two. So if you see any segment, it is attached with two segments, one at each end. Do you see that? One at each end. Let's begin with another example. Let's say we have uh, this segment. Now it is attached with one at each end. Let's say like this. Now if I add another segment here, this one is open. It has to be attached with another segment. So. So we connect it with something else, kind of like this. 
So you notice that each segment is attached with another segment, one at each end. Uh, let's say we have a segment like this. Now it is attached with two segments, let's say one here and the other one here. Now these two segments, if I connect them, in that case also we do make a polygon, correct? So that is what it really means. Each segment intersects exactly two other segments, one at each end. So that is the first property. And the second property is that no two segments with common endpoints are in a straight line. So we say no two segments, no two segments with common endpoints. Now these are the endpoints we are talking about, right? So no two segments with common endpoints are, we can say, collinear. Collinear means in the same line. Now that is second most important property, right? So there are two basic properties of any polygon. So we can actually define polygons in this fashion. So polygons are made of connected segments such that each segment intersects exactly two other segments, one at each end. And second is, no two segments with common endpoints are collinear. That means in the same line, correct? So that is how we actually define a polygon. Is that clear? Correct? Now that these two points will help us answer question number three, which is explain why the following are not polynomials, right? Explain why the following are not polygons. So now you can actually pause the video and answer this particular question, why these three are not polygons. Now let us answer. So we have three figures here. Let's call them A, B and C. We need to explain why they are not polygons. The first one here is not a polygon because of the first point, which is that each segment should intersect exactly two other segments. Now the important thing is not like this. Each segment is not like this attaching with two other segments. One at each end point. Do you understand? One at each end point. So that is important. So here there is no segment on the other end. There is one segment on one end, not at the other end. So that is missing. You get the point. That is why A is not a polygon. Okay. Now how about this one? This one is not a polygon because it has a curved surface. Remember, polygons are made by segments only, right? So for polygons, we only have segments, but doesn't, this is not a segment. This one is not a segment. Perfect. Now, explain why the third figure does not represent a polygon. This comes from our second point which states that two segments with a common endpoint are not collinear. 
But what we see here is, notice these two segments. So if I name this, let's say we name this as A, B, C, D, and E, then D, C, and C, B are collinear. Do you see that? That is why this is not a polygon. Perfect. So that is how we explain why a figure is not a polygon. Perfect. Now let's move on and answer the last question here, which is that we need to draw equiangular, equilateral, and regular hexagon. Okay, so let's begin with regular hexagon. So hexagon means six-sided figure, right? So, so let's say this is one side, and all same angles and same sides. So kind of difficult. You need to draw with 120 degrees angle. So what I will do here is kind of make it approximate, right? So we have this, and let me just make some guide points here. So a figure like this becomes a regular hexagon if all the sides are equal and all angles are equal to 120 degree right so all angles are equal to 120 degrees so we have all equal sides and equal angles perfect so that is a regular hexagon. Now if we have a equilateral, equilateral means equal side lengths. I'll make a hexagon. So in this case, we want all sides to be of equal length. The angles may not be correct. So what we will do here is we kind of change the shape, right? So, so what we can do here is we can just maintain two sides and make this as a different shape, right? So it becomes a, a hexagon which will not have same angles. So for example, I could make like this. Let's say this is my... So if equilateral means we want equal sides, so let's maintain the side lengths as same, but we'll change the angle. So we'll not maintain this equal angles. So what we've made here is maintained the equal side lengths, right? But we have changed the angles. So, so if I change the angles, kind of like this, and make it like this, where all are equal lengths, the angles may be different. That becomes equilateral hexagon. So equal side lengths. Different angles. Angles are not same, you can say, right? The last one here is to sketch equiangular, right? See? will again sketch a hexagon. So what I'll do this time is, since we want equal angles, we'll just stretch this horizontally. So we can make a hexagon like this. So this side is far longer than the other sides. But we are going to maintain same angle of 120 degrees. Correct. So that becomes equiangular. So all equal angles, all sides not equal. Correct. So that is how we could actually draw equiangular, equilateral, and regular hexagon. 
Now question for you is why is this angle 120 degrees for a hexagon right so that is a question for you and as you know you could divide it into how many triangles one two three four triangles right one two three four triangles and you know the formula of the angles the sum of angles is 180 degrees times n minus 2 and in our case it is 180 times 6 minus 2 which is 4 right so that is the sum of all the angles so each angle will be how much that sum divided by 6 so if I divide this by 6 which is 180 times 4 and if I divide this by 6 what do I get each interior angle right so 6 times 30 and 30 times 4 so what we get here is 180 times 4 divided by 6 is 120 degrees so that is how you get 120 degrees as our interior angles right so so I hope you remember this formula sum of interior angles of any polygon closed polygon and from there for a regular polygon you can find the each angle so I hope that makes sense feel free to write your comments and share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for watching and all the best